In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the front caliper on this Ford F450. Let's get started. With a 21 millimeter socket, remove all 10 of your lug nuts and then remove the wheel. To start with a 14 millimeter, let's break the banjo bolt free so that once the caliper's off, it can be easier to remove it. I don't want to remove it at this point. I just want it broken free. There we go. Fluid will start coming out. You'll see it seeping through. So I'm going to close it back up, just not as tight as it was, just enough to stop the fluid from flowing out of here. Next with a 16 millimeter socket, remove the two slider pin bolts that hold the caliper through the slider pins onto the bracket. Leave this one a couple threads in so that it can hold the caliper while you take the lower one off. Okay, you can remove this one. And since the caliper is staying in place, I'm gonna remove this one also. You may need a small pry bar. Pry from the top out, it kind of swings forward. There we go. Let's remove the 10 millimeter bolt that holds the bracket for the brake line in place, or the brake hose. You wanna do this to give you some extra slack on that brake hose once you remove the caliper. These can be fairly rusty, so try not to break this off. Remove it all the way, and then we'll free up the bracket. There we go. There we go. You can pry this away. And once you swing it out like this, you should be able to bring it up. The pads are pushed out by these pad spreader springs. So most likely for you, the same thing is gonna happen. As soon as you pull that caliper off, the second the pads have some room, they're gonna come flying off of here. So just be careful. It will be somewhat difficult when reinstalling, but a little bit easier because we can be ready to swing the caliper right on. But regardless, if you don't have a lot of rust buildup here and the pads can slide smoothly, which should be the case, they will come right out as you remove the caliper. Use a 24 millimeter socket and remove these two bolts that hold the caliper bracket onto the knuckle. There's one. Leave that threaded in a few turns so you can take off the lower one without the caliper bracket falling off. Take this one out and finish removing the top one and there's your caliper bracket. Now if you had your new caliper, you would remove these slider pins, push them out through one side and there we go, pull them out this side. Remove it all the way and you can add a little bit of grease to this area but What's most likely going to happen is as you put it through the boot, it's going to get completely wiped off. So I do coat it just a little bit, thin layer, but I actually put most of my grease inside of the boot so that it can actually stay in there. And this will act more as a uh, reserve of grease down the road. So you can put quite a bit in here. It's difficult to actually put too much because as you put the slider pin in, if it's too much, it will come out as you try to put that in. So work it, into the, um, work it into these areas. Do the same on the bottom. Now take your slider pin, start it in, and press it all the way through. There we go. All the excess grease got pushed out, so that's fine. You can save this and use it for the other side. But you wanna make sure that this goes back and forth smoothly with no hangups, and it does. There's plenty of grease in there, so once again, do the same thing to the other side slider pin. Now this area right here on the caliper bracket is where the anti-rattle clips sit, and you wanna cover this with grease, just a thin layer, so that you can protect it from building up rust over time as the, uh, the brakes wear down. If it builds up rust, it'll actually swell, and it will press the pads in, prevent them from sliding smoothly back and forth, then you wanna take your anti-rattle clips and you'll notice that they are different. 
One of them has a smaller middle section. The other one has a larger one. The one that has a larger middle section will actually go on the bottom. So slide that over here. And then you wanna do the same thing on the top one. If you put too much grease, it'll actually squeeze out and get onto the rotor. So you wanna be careful about that. That's why I said just a thin layer should be good. And then once you take this one, you can slide it over, it should clip on. Now, this one will have a little bit of an adjustment to it. That's fine, we can figure that out once it's in the vehicle, but they are greased up and mounted. Now with a 14 millimeter socket, remove this banjo bolt. There we go, as you can see, one of the copper washers already came off, that's perfect. You don't want it to get stuck on the hose or on the bolt, we will be reusing the bolt. On the other side of the hose, it looks the same. It's nice and clean. Well, I know it's rusty here, but this area right here is clean where it's supposed to seal up. And there's the other one. Discard those and you can remove the caliper. Drain the fluid that's in it. Now let's reconnect the new caliper onto the brake hose. You wanna use your banjo bolt with new crush washers or copper washers, however you wanna call them. Slide one on, then put it through the hose. Then on the other side, you wanna put another copper washer. So make sure you sandwich the hose in between those two and without dropping either of them, thread the bolt onto the caliper. Oops, sometimes it'll be tricky to line up just because the hose wants to go its own way. Make sure you thread this on by hand so you don't cross thread it. There we go. Once you have it started, let's snug it up. I'm using my impact to just get it close. Of course, I will torque it. For now, at least fluid won't be leaking, but the fact that I have to torque it means I have to install this first. Otherwise, it'll be difficult to put leverage on it. So as long as this isn't leaking, leave it like this for now. Line up the caliper bracket. Start in the two bolts. And if you're gonna put anything on them, put thread locker, not grease or anises. You want these to lock in tight. Let's snug them up and the torque for these is 166 foot pounds. There's one. And two. Now let's put the brake pads in. They have little hooks on the top and on the bottom. They need to grab onto these uh, anti-rattle clips. Now with the pads in, I'm actually going to clamp them down and not very tight, just a little, because when we put the pad spreader springs in, these are gonna wanna fly apart. And yes, I'm gonna have to hold them when the caliper goes on, but it's easier to have two hands and maneuver the spring with two hands and have these held together. So if you have a large pair of locking pliers, a C-clamp, anything that you have that'll hold these together, great, use it. Now, these springs will have a smaller hook that has to go right over this tab here in the hole of the caliper bracket. And you wanna bend, not bend, but pry the end of the spring to go in between these two parts of the anti-rattle clip, between these tabs and hook onto the inside of the pad, just like so. There we go. That's hooked on on both. Make sure this doesn't fall out. It has a little divot in there that it kind of grabs onto. Now that this is done, let's move on to the bottom. And this one goes on the exact same way. They are the same spring. So it's uh, not necessary to make sure you put the same one on the same side. Hold the pads, remove the C-clamp or whatever you use to hold these on, if you use anything. On the bottom of the caliper, you'll see that it has this hook right here that has to go underneath this anti-rattle clip. There we go, put the uh, caliper over the pads, slide it down just like that. Make sure the slider pins are pushed out all the way so it can go over the caliper bracket and lay it down flat. Now the pads are secured, the caliper is in place. Push these back in. And let's put the bolts through. Start them on by hand. The 
Snug these up and the torque for them is 56 foot-pounds. And there we go. And now let's torque the banjo bolt to 26 foot-pounds. It's important that you have it properly tightened so that brake fluid can stay in here and not leak. There we go. Let's resecure this bracket. It has this pin on the further inboard side that has to line up on the spring seat. It's got a hole that it needs to line up with and you know that it's lined up when that goes in and the bolt hole also lines up. So try to get this as uh, close as possible. It might want to fight you just because of the pressure that the caliper is pulling but it's probably because I have the wheel turned all the way. If it's not turned all the way, it might be a little more easy. Thread it in. Nice and snug. Now take a 10 millimeter or 3 8 wrench, whichever fits better. For me, it happens to be a 3 8 and open up the bleeder screw and we'll do a gravity bleed. What that means is we're gonna open this up and wait for gravity to pull the fluid down into the caliper and out the bleeder screw and push the air out. Once we're done with that, we'll close it off and do a manual brake bleed. There we go. We have a steady trickle of fluid now with the gravity bleed. There is no air coming out anymore, so I'm gonna close it off and like I said, do a manual brake bleed, it's important. And then after that, assuming that yours is done, Let's clean everything off. You don't want to confuse any residual brake fluid for a potential leak. So clean everything the best you can. Now when you're done, don't forget to put the cap on for the bleeder screw. Top off your master cylinder and let's put the wheel on. If you need to, clean up this surface. It doesn't have to be perfect, just make sure it's somewhat flat so that the wheel can mount on flush. And then it's a good idea to either put a little bit of grease on here or any C's and try to avoid getting it on the lug studs as much as possible and of course on the brake surface or the brake rotor surface. I'm going to use my jack to roll this wheel on. It's very heavy. And now put on all 10 of your lug nuts, bottom them out in a cross pattern, and torque them down to 165 foot-pounds, also in a cross pattern. There you have it, they're all torqued. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.